I think I'm gonna blind all of you guys by the end of this video with this, uh, whoo, crazy jacket. Hello, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've all been doing super duper well and looking after yourself. As I always say, thank you once again for joining me and it's so great to be back for another Duran Duran deep dive episode. Thank you for all your amazing feedback over the last few weeks. I know I've been a bit slow getting back to comments, but please know I do read all of your comments. I will get back to as many as I can over the next couple of weeks as I work on my next couple of videos that are going to be coming out. Also, yes, I am aware that Duran Duran have actually dropped yet another single. I believe the name of the single is Black Moonlight. But yeah, I haven't heard it yet. I've heard like the tiniest snippet of it, but I haven't heard anything more than that. I have deliberately saved it for a video. And we'll probably do the same as well uh, with the Dance Macabre album. However, we'll try and keep it in chronological order. So I might react to the singles, but I won't do like a whole album reaction until we get to the end of the series. So uh, stay tuned for that. We will get round to it eventually. I'm actually amazed that we're now at the year 2000 with this deep dive series. It's a bit of a reminder that I am slowly but surely coming to the end of this deep dive series. But like I said, the content is not going to end there. Uh, we still have so many singles to get through. We've got B-sides to get through. We've just got so many different things that we can do. So, like I said, stay tuned. Also, I forgot to wish you guys happy Halloween season. Happy fall to my American friends. Hope you're enjoying your pumpkin spice lattes. Hope you are decorating for Halloween. I've seen some people going all out where they literally just overhaul their entire living room and change everything to complete full decor. I'm living for that. I think that's so cool. But I'm wishing you guys all the best in October. Halloween is my favorite time of the year. I always try and do something a little special for Halloween. Now I am dressed themed for this video as you probably know if you're familiar with what the pop trash cover looks like. I'm dressed in this lovely silver sequin jacket. On camera it actually looks like it's holographic sequins but that's actually uh, the reflection of my PC and the screen so it's kind of cool. It kind of gives off that holographic vibe uh, just with all the colors sort of reflecting off it. So we're actually coming to an album now that I I don't think is very talked about. To be honest, when I looked through their discography and I saw this album, I didn't really recognize it. I didn't recognize any of the songs from this album. So I'd be interested to hear if anything does, you know, in some way ring familiar. Just brought the cover up at the moment as well. As you can see, we're, we're matching. So the front cover of this album, very, very cool. I think that the Pop Trash title comes in a few different colors depending on where it's been printed. I think it's originally printed in purple, I'm not sure. But this was the highest resolution I could find of this cover, so I've just brought this one up. Andrew Day is also credited as the artist behind the artwork. So for anyone who hasn't seen my Medazzaland video, Andrew Day also worked on the cover art for Medazzaland. So on the front cover here, you've got this super sparkly, uh, what I think is a hot rod. And I believe that that hot rod belongs to Liberace. So he has like a garage somewhere, I think in the US. I think you can even still visit the garage to this day. But yes, there's a whole garage full of all these amazing cars. And one of those cars is just completely decked out in holographic rhinestones, which is just amazing. So interesting that they picked this as a cover. To me, I'm getting glitz glam Hollywood vibes from the cover. And it's actually quite funny since they released this album under Hollywood Records. It would be the first and the last album that they would release under Hollywood Records because I believe the band were really unhappy with the way that Hollywood Records was being managed. But I know that Duran Duran only stayed with them for a brief time before breaking away. So again, we've got this glitzy, glammy cover. So as we know with Medazzaland, it was only released in some parts of the world, whereas I think Pop Trash was released worldwide. I actually think that this is 
one of their albums that doesn't have any singles. I will verify that in the facts below. We're also moving into the CD and digital world in terms of format. So as far as I know, this album was released on CD. I don't think it was ever pressed to vinyl. They will be reissuing Pop Trash on vinyl at the very end of the year in December. Very much like Medazzaland, I believe it's going to be released as two vinyl discs with a booklet inside as well. I also forgot to note this would also be the last album of the trio Simon Le Bon, Nick Rhodes and Warren Cucurulo before they returned to the Fab Five for their release in 2003. So I'm really keen to get into this album now. I don't know what to expect. Anyway guys get your shiny sunglasses and shiny jackets ready because we're going to jump into this album now. We're starting off with track number one guys it's called Someone Else Not Me. I don't know why I'm laughing. Like, I feel like I'm about to laugh. Wow, that's an interesting opener for an album, something that's quite slow and somber. So we haven't started off with something high energy or upbeat, like go back to the wedding album, for example, too much information is like this full energy overload. Instead, we've just got something simple, soft. I actually quite like the song. It's quite nice so far. What I'm hearing so far, I know we're like, what, 30 seconds in? We're exactly 30 seconds in. Something I want to really pretty. Like I said before, this is quite pretty. I'm just kind of interested as to why they've sort of started off with this one. And I'm wondering, is, is this going to be like a whole album of ballads? what it reminds me of a lot of like early 2000s brit pop a lot of those like sad brit pop songs are what what are coming to my head maybe a little bit of a dash of robbie williams with i don't know i don't know why i mentioned robbie williams then but do you know what i mean those sad brit pop songs that were quite popular in the early 2000s it's just giving me like a sad brit pop song vibe you be the judge of that <laughs> especially with that guitar I'm quite 
quite impressed so far. Just gonna say really quickly, Simon's vocals sound kind of low in the mix. Like they sound like they're being drowned out ever so slightly by other elements in the song. But he sounds like he's been turned down a little bit. We've got that repetitive outro. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna, I was just about to chuckle then at the fact that I said early 2000s Britpop, but I, I don't know, does anyone else get that? It's just reminiscent of someone, someone in that era that, I don't, again, the names just won't come to my head right now. I mentioned this before, but I'm probably gonna cut it so that it's at the end of the song. That was really, really pretty. I really liked that song. But I'm kind of confused as to why they started off with a slow, sad ballad. A lot of the time you want to start with something nice and punchy and energetic that's sort of going to draw you in. But that might be intentional. Maybe this is a slow, sort of somber album following Medazzaland. I don't know. Obviously, we're going to keep listening to find out. Also, just very quickly, I'm not going to go too much into the number of plays. But the most played song on this album is Someone Else Not Me, the one that we just listened to. Part of me is thinking, is it going to get better from here? You know, is there going to be some more sort of upbeat elements to this album or is it going to be slow and slow and somber? Okay, guys, so we're moving on now to track number two, which is called Lava Lamp. I had a lava lamp growing up. Ooh, okay. So now we're going into that upbeat bit of a dancey kind of track. I really like the sounds that they're using here. Obviously, Warren's got the guitar going through. Nick's got these really nice uh, spacey UFO kind of effects going on. I like it, and it kind of kind of captures that element of the lava lamp just sort of going throughout. Yeah, quite dancey. Quite the dancey track. Far, this is quite good very very different to track one and we're we're obviously bringing those electronic elements back again like i said i was expecting some more unplugged acoustic kind of stuff but yeah that chorus was also a little bit strange that la 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 lava lamp sort of threw me off a little bit i'll be honest <laughs> psychedelic now getting all these different pads and then sitar comes in do, 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 do. like again i'm on a bit of a trip maybe we've come off that medazzaland drug and we're going into something something slightly different now <laughs> Okay. 
interesting now. Now they brought that sitar in. I like that they use those instruments though, like the ethnic instruments. Again, I'm not sure if it's a, an actual instrument or a pad. Sounds like a real instrument, like a real sitar. Just a quick side note, I'm not talking throughout the tracks very much at the moment because I don't want to compete too much with the music. Quite enjoyed that track. It had like this psychedelic kind of element to it, which was quite cool. A little bit reminiscent of some of the previous work they were doing. Definitely wasn't expecting the addition of that sitar. Like I said, I quite like it when they add those ethnic instruments in. Also, I didn't mention in the introduction, but I believe Simon was still struggling with writer's block throughout the writing and recording of this album. So Nick and Warren stepped in a little bit with the songwriting. Um, they were also working on a side project at the same time called TV Mania, which we will eventually jump into. I'm pretty sure they wrote about 60 odd songs as part of the TV Mania side project. So some of the songs on this album are sort of repurposed TV Mania material. I'm not entirely sure what songs these were, but yes, we do have Nick and Warren helping out a little bit with two completely different sounding songs. It's kind of hard to put a mood on this at the moment. But yeah, so far, so good. I think these two songs are quite nice. They're not exactly wowing me, but they are very enjoyable. Okay, guys, moving on to track number three now. It's called Playing With Uranium. That's a very dangerous thing to do, but don't try that at home. Ooh. Straight away, we're like, Ode to Medazzaland. That kind of reminds me a little bit of, is it Big Bang Generation? Just ever so slightly. I'm not sure. I think that's a guitar sound there. Some guitar effect. Keep going. <laughs> I'm talking about. This is my jam. Okay, just very quickly, I love the way that Simon sort of built up to that chorus, like da 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 That was very cool. Yeah, see, you guys know I like the, the heavier kind of stuff. That probably came out totally wrong there. The heavier songs, yes, the heavier songs is what I'm supposed to say. A little bit more guitar driven, those effects. So far, like, this is probably the best one. Anyway. <laughs> almost like a tale of a reverb in a way that's sort of pulling us into the chorus so simon's building up to the chorus and like a tail end of a reverb's kind of going um what was it they'll they'll never forget us and then you just hear like this this atmosphere love it
I love that sound. That dissonant sound again. There's also this other sound. I'm just gonna let it roll out. Also credit to whoever played bass on this because it's really nice. I know we're missing John at the moment, but there was another droney sound going throughout and it was more prominent in that chorus section. Hands down, that is my favorite track so far. Loved that rock element coming through. Like I said, just kind of reminded me of the previous album just a little bit. I will say once again, it sounds like Simon's voice is really low in the mix. Not like super duper low, but he sounds like he's being drowned a little bit by some of the other elements. Just a little detail I'm noticing. And I'm going to see if I can pick it up through any of the other songs. Okay, we're moving on to track number four now. It's called Hallucinating Elvis. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, hello. Nice. Oh. Goodness gracious. Okay, that was a lot to take in. We had this uh, panned vocal and then this bass and then all of a sudden like this um, distorted guitar. Hello. We've just taken away that distorted guitar and now I feel like I'm falling down this psychedelic hole. <laughs> is going on <laughs> okay I'm thrown off a bit by this one just a little bit This is so interesting. We're going into all these different sections. Simon's putting on this like this drawl through one part and then back into that distorted guitar. I'm I'm struggling to keep up just a little bit with how much this is changing. Nick never fails to deliver with effects, honestly. He's just the master at it. I don't actually think that's a female vocal. I think that that's Simon singing in high pitch. I know he's capable of hitting high notes and I think that's him. Tell me what you guys think. Do you reckon that's him?
Record scratch. Gotta be honest, I like that line. Hallucinating Elvis, Hawaii to Las Vegas. You got that. That, that little section. Very, very fuzzy, pretty fuzzy. <laughs> Wow, it's hard to keep up with this one. There are certain sections being referenced in like say the chorus section, which is, you know, quite cool. It sort of comes together towards the ending part here, um, which we're sort of coming up on that ending bit now, so. hypnotized by vocals my eyes are gonna start spinning I'm gonna get like the twisty spiral in my eyes like some sample of a German news teller or something there um wow okay I do not know what to make of that one that was just that was insane. I will say, like, I have a massive appreciation for how much work went into that. Um, for me, it just felt like this um, really strange, like, Western-inspired sort of distorted I don't even know what to say here you know it kind of had like this western kind of influence with like this distorted guitar coming in at some point don't really know what to make of that one some cool elements but um yeah definitely very different to what I've heard before and I feel like that probably would have sat better on Medazzaland because it was just a bit of a trip let's be honest track number five now guys called starting to remember So we're sort of going back to that slow. Slow acoustic, slow jam, slow acoustic, slow jam. Yeah, okay, so once again that psychedelic kind of sound is recurring a little bit throughout these songs. Like that sort of droney sound in the guitar which sounds very 60s. It's very 1960s, it's like that da -da. Definitely getting that through the song as well. You found a way to open up the door
honest, I feel like you've got a lot of their old school influences coming through here, like from the 60s and 70s. That's kind of what I'm hearing in this track. But I'm definitely getting um, remnants of some of their older influences versus like, say, what's trending at the time in, say, the early 2000s, for example, like dance or electronic pop elements. <laughs> Sounds like there's some kind of effect on his voice that's making him sound very um I don't know if it's like a vocoder or something but it sounds like there is a very subtle effect going on there too yeah or like a phaser yeah and then that amplifier sort of comes through that was quite a short song yeah that was definitely a very nice track kind of reminiscent to the first track that we heard on the album but yeah definitely took me back in time with some of those elements uh and some of the instruments used and some of the effects used on those instruments I wasn't quite wowed by that track but i'm yeah, trying to put my finger on whether or not Simon's voice had this very subtle effect on it. I'm really not sure how I feel so far. It's going to be interesting getting into what's kind of considered the second half of the album. But we're moving on to track number six now, guys. Slightly longer song. It's called Pop Trash Movie. Oh, another slow one. Oh, I like that guitar. Yeah, he's, he's a bit, bit further forward now. If you've got a good pair of headphones, you can hear this beautiful atmosphere in the background. Very, very low in the mix, but it's there. And I actually really like Simon's vocals in this one. Probably his best vocals so far. Waiting for like a, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just going to interrupt again, but that psychedelic rock element really, really coming through here, especially with this chorus and the vocal layers. Okay, I really like this one. I'm not sure exactly what it is about it, but it just flows really, really nicely. Sorry, once again, very quickly, even though it has that psychedelic rock kind of feel to it, I almost picture like vintage Hollywood movie stars 
um, and the whole videos in black and white. It's weird. You're getting this psychedelic 1960s rock, but then in your head you picture these really old school silent era clips. I must say, that would go so well with its own music video. And since it's called Pop Trash Movie, why did it not have a video? They might have made like a little promotional video for it or something, I'm not sure. But my head was exploding with images and it's just really beautiful, quite ballady. That was definitely one of the top ones as well so far, Pop Trash Movie. That was a very fantastic song, super underrated. Anyway guys, track number seven is called Fragment. Very reminiscent of Seven and the Ragged Tiger. Interesting. Kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Gone to Earth, is it? Is it Gone to Earth? David Sullivan, Gone to Earth? Just a little, little bit. Tiny bit. So that was obviously an interlude. I was getting a little bit of a Seven and the Ragged Tiger throwback from that. Very cool. We're well, onto track number eight. It's called Mars Meets Venus. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Feels like a take on online dating or something. And this is probably early days of online dating as well. Like you make a profile and you put all your interests in there and Love, I do actually love these lyrics. Some of the best ones on this album so far. Here we go. <laughs> Do 
like the inclusion of the female vocals too. This is awesome. I love this. Oh my gosh. I love the effects on the guitar too. Hats off to Warren here. Ooh, looking at you. That's got to be like my top so far now. I loved that. Straight away, you're just in with all these effects and then do, 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 do. Ooh, and then dive into this like electronic driven track with Simon singing about online dating. That was a ride of a track. And like I said, if they had singles from this album, that should have 100% been one of them because that was very cool. Underrated once again because it doesn't have a lot of plays here. It's under 50,000 plays. What's going on guys? We're on to track number nine now. It's called Lady Xanax. Interesting note too, very quickly, it's the sa exact same length as Pop Trash Movie. It has a similar kind of vibe too. Here comes the morning light you can face. Wow, beautiful vocals. Lie on your bed staring into space. Watch the time slip gently by. Don't ask why. I love the atmosphere they've created with Simon's vocals too. Beautiful chords coming from the synth. Pretty straightforward guitar. Yeah, very reminiscent of Pop Trash Movie for sure. Definitely the verses are my favorite part so far of this. Like a psychedelic rock then falls into like a grungy distortion of the guitar coming through there. Grungy. Oh nice. I love that fluttery sound, whatever that is. Something very, again, strangely unusual about this track as well. I think it's just a mix of the vocals and then there's just the little subtle effects that make it just kind of unusual. Making that sound. Getting like different sounds. 
around from different areas again. Wow. Warren's leaving his mark before he goes. <laughs> thing is I think what they're doing is they're layering so many guitar sounds over top of one another. If you listen very closely you can just hear like a lot of Warren playing around with all these different styles and effects and then in post I think they layer them a little bit or he'll go back over it and play something slightly different. It had that psychedelic element to it but it was a little bit lackluster in a way. I think Pop Trash Movie flowed a, just a little bit better and I enjoyed that one much much more. We're moving on to track number 10 guys, it's called The Sun Doesn't Shine Forever. Why does this remind me of like Stone Temple Pilots or something? I don't know, maybe it's just the guitar in it or something, I don't, I don't know. I'm embarrassed now. At the end of the rainbow Found each other there Strange We never thought the colors would I like that Simon's voice is coming through nice and clear on this one. Quite a lot of slow tracks on this. A lot more than probably any of the other albums I've listened to. Yeah. Interesting. This is just very much a slow dance number to me. So I like how they did a bit of a change there at coming towards the end. Very nice. I'm looking at the number of plays thinking, mm. Look, another slow song, but again, I'm not really wowed by that. It's a very pretty song, don't get me wrong, 
that rhymed. It wasn't really one that I walk away and remember. It's quite low in the number of plays as well compared to some of the other ones. So I can imagine that maybe a lot of fans like the song, but don't go back to it like, oh. Anyway, we're moving on to track 11 now, Kiss Goodbye. It's a 40 second song, so I'm going to assume it is yet another interlude. Very pretty. Why do these interludes feel like I'm still listening to Seven? Maybe they are um, referencing some of the older songs or they're Whoa, okay. Boom, straight into the next track. Sorry, I couldn't, I'm word salad today. Yeah, Kiss Goodbye and Fragment kind of sound like Seven and the Ragged Tiger days. Maybe, maybe it's just a little bit of a homage to that or something, I'm not sure. But I just get transported back to that time with both of those. Track number 12 now, guys, is called Last Day on Earth. Oh! I heard that before, it was like... Heaviest song on the album so far, you're probably not expecting that. I love the low end in this though, nice and heavy. to think that they started this album with a really soft song and now all of a sudden they're bringing us to a closing with this heavy rock element with all the guitars and distortion and woo! I love how it sort of speeds up a little bit like double time in the chorus. Wow. The beat's changing a lot. Again, this is another one that reminds me a lot of the previous album elements of this track that remind me of Medazzaland for sure. Remind me a little bit of Hold Me, Thrill Me, you two. I don't know why. <laughs> this 
funny some of the things that pop into your head when you're listening to another song. Goodness me. Had like that drum and bass kind of backbeat to it. Dude, dude. Very strange one to almost finish with. Um, Prototypes is our last one. Definitely the heaviest track on the album so far. And like I said, it reminded me a little bit of Medazalan, maybe a little bit more of that like Be My Icon because there was just so many layered guitars and things like that. Track 13 is called Prototypes. And I believe that's the last one on the album. I'm not going to jump into Someone Else Not Me in Spanish and French because there are actually two different versions in Spanish and French. Um, but just to save time and battery, we'll have to finish on Prototypes. Whoa. Okay, so it's just getting heavier now. Love the panning though on that guitar. Is this a song or is this like a what on earth? You want some more. vocal volume. higher. Volume. Is that possible? Can you make the voice a little bit higher? Wow, okay. Was that Portuguese, guys? Any of my uh, friends over in Brazil can tell me if that's Portuguese or not? This is recording session snippets. Maybe Warren had some friends behind the mixing desk that were talking about the vocals or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> Love that guitar there. It's very shoegazy. Interesting. Makes me want to do some research on this. Whoa, okay. So cool. Who needs drugs? <laughs> oh my gosh, I love these effects. Man, I'm kind of getting sad here. I feel like this is a song graveyard. This is all the, the, these are all the fragments of what could have been. And I feel like this here would have been great as well. Cause I can so hear Simon singing like this beautiful melody on top of this. coming over the top. That's how it all starts. Or it's gibberish vocals or something. Bring it back. Get Simon to sing over the top of that because that would be stunning. Just for anyone who doesn't know much about the recording process and synths and all that stuff, essentially a lot of those are raw synth sounds. So when you're recording from a hardware synth, typically you'll get those really nice raw sounds and then they'll end up in the track. Maybe Nick liked them so much and wanted to use them on certain songs. That melodic guitar section, that was gorgeous. If anyone knows whether or not that became a finished product, please link it in the comment section below. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of demo stuff out there somewhere. Um, but yeah, like a lot of recorded synth sounds, sounds like some experimentation on the guitar. Yeah, just some behind the scenes studio stuff, which for me, I thought that was a six minute song, but it was just six minutes of experimentation. So guys, my final thoughts, there were some great tracks on that album, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't really stand out an awful lot. For me, it's definitely nowhere near a top contender. 
Um, there were just some songs that just felt very out of place, like Hallucinating Elvis, for example. I, I didn't really love Lady Xanax, The Sun Doesn't Shine Forever. Yeah, bit of a hit and miss. A lot of the slow, somber tracks, they all fit well together, but then a lot of them were broken up by those upbeat electronic tracks, which I did like. I did like that there was some energy in this album, but for me it just felt a little bit disorganized compared to some of their other work that they've done. I didn't love it. I definitely didn't love it. Some of the songs sounded like Simon was being drowned out quite a lot by all the other elements in the songs, so I didn't quite like that. Mars Meets Venus, Pop Trash Movie and Playing With Uranium were my top three on this album. But yeah, look, I, I'd i still recommend it if you're on a Duran Duran listening journey, just to check it out, just to see how, again, how they've changed over time. This one's definitely not one that I would rush to the record store and purchase. Again, I love the cover, I love a lot of the electronic songs, but yeah, it, it's just missing something for me. It's It's definitely not got that power and that personality behind it that I know Duran Duran bring to most albums. It's kind of sitting with Thank You a little bit as probably one of the least favourites. It felt like a little bit of a melting pot of themes going on throughout this album. Definitely evoking some cool imagery. I loved that. I really enjoyed that. Anyway, guys, I am going to wrap it up there. I do have another long video to edit. But thank you so much for joining me once again on this journey. Definitely let me know if you had some top tracks from this album. Let me know what you think about it. Share your thoughts and your opinions down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video and haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out. If you'd like to check out my Patreon page as well, the link is in the description box below. But you guys just liking and sharing and commenting on my video is massively appreciated and I would not be able to do this without you guys so thank you so so much and I really hope I see you guys again very very soon in the next video bye